Hello and welcome. Today we're going to learn how to build a reliable and redundant NAS server with Raspberry Pi 3. Stay with me. So you ask yourself, reliable and redundant NAS server with Raspberry Pi 3? Yes, we can achieve it and I will show you how to implement it and how to configure it and we will understand the architecture and the calculations behind it. So let's begin. The first step that I took is to buy two Mavio enclosure. Each enclosure have two bays, meaning you can only insert two discs for each enclosure. Additional, each enclosure have three modes, JBOD, RAID 1 and RAID 0. We will choose as the first level of this architecture the RAID 1 configurations in order to supply the protection of the, ma the media, the redundancy feature. The next step is obviously to buy a disk. I bought four disks, two disks for each enclosure. I bought it from uh, Seagate, the model called, uh, called Fire Cuda. Uh, the disk need to be in 2.5 inch sides because the base of the enclosure sides. Uh, I chose the one terabyte uh, capacity and the uh, five 0.4k RPM. I know it's very uh, sound low level performance but I wanted to show you what we can achieve from it. Uh, don't forget that this HDD disk have inside him SSD features. We will see those SSD features activate uh, in the next videos. Most of the SSD features will be activated in on the internal operations of the NAS server and we will see really high performance of uh, IOPS and full boot. So, after we got the disks and we insert them to the enclosure and we configure the RAID 1, we will need to understand what in words of performance we can achieve from it. So, in order to know what the performance in IOPS and full boot from each enclosure, we will need first to know what is the performance in IOPS and throughput for each disk. So, we got the formula over here for IOPS for each disk and for the throughput. As you can see, we, can, we need to know the average latency and average sick time for each disk. So, I took it from Seagate website, of course, for this uh, specific model. So, we took the <coughs> we took the average uh, sick time which is 13 in millisecond and the average latency 5.6 in millisecond we will convert those values to second and then put them in the formula and we'll get the IOPS for each disk which is 53.76 I know it doesn't sound a lot but on the next videos when we will be testing our NAS server architecture you will see really high IOPS. So, after we figure out the IOPS for each disk, let's figure out how much IOPS we can get from each enclosure. So, in order to get the maximum read IOPS for each enclosure, we need to take the, re the read IOPS we uh, figure out for each disk and multiply it by the number of disks uh, in the RAID configuration. So, in this enclosure, in this RAID configuration, we only have two disks. So, we will multiply the number we got by two and we will, <coughs> we will get 107.52 IOPS, which represent the maximum read IOPS for each enclosure. Next, uh, in order to calculate the right IOPS, we will need to divide the maximum read IOPS for each enclosure by 2. Why 2? Because this is the penalty of the RAID 1. Why it has penalty? Because we got some protection on the media, right? Uh, we cannot get uh, protection with uh, performance and everything without uh, degrade some, uh, some performance or some uh, uh, some numbers, so this is the penalty. <coughs> uh, 
so we got the number we started with uh, which is the 53.76 uh, so the maximum read IOPS is 172.52 and the maximum write IOPS for each enclosure is 53.76 next we will need to figure out what is the throughput for each enclosure so in order to get the throughput we will need to take the IOPS we figure out for each disk and multiply it by the IO size so uh, in order to get this throughput for each enclosure we will take the maximum read IOPS and multiply it by the IO sides I familiar with which is the average IO sides we will work with which is the 4 kilobyte so we will get uh, 0 0.42 megabyte uh, per second for each enclosure for boot. Uh, don't forget this IO site will change uh, according to your uh, environments and we will see uh, by the testing how the throughput uh, uh, can change so the next step of our RAID architecture is to take both enclosures and connect them through their USB connector to our Raspberry Pi 3 NAS server I already uh, brought into the Raspberry Pi 3 SD card the OMV uh, system which uh, going to provide us the NAS server uh, features so why we chose RAID 0? we chose RAID 0 because we wish right now to improve our uh, NAS server and to get as uh, performance as much as much as we can so RAID 0 uh, will do it for us without any penalty that we need to consider so RAID 0 will take both enclosure together and double its read IOPS write IOPS and throughput why it double it because there is no uh, there is no penalty here so it will double all the uh, <coughs> all the uh, performance uh, categories we already calculated if it's the read IOPS write IOPS and the throughput so we know that each enclosure is uh, connect for USB to Raspberry Pi 3. Raspberry Pi 3 can support only USB 2 right now, right? So USB 2, its uh, speed to deliver the data is 480 megabit per second. So in order to, to get in megabyte the performance, we'll need to divide megabit uh, the megabit by 8 and then we will get the performance in megabyte so each enclosure can deliver 16 megabyte per second according to the USB connector okay so <coughs> as you can see I already took the read the maximum read IOPS from the first enclosure and the second enclosure and I sum them together in order to get the maximum read IOPS on our RAID 0 architecture. It's also uh, applied to the write IOPS, it's the same number because we don't have any penalty here. So for the throughput, it's the same. I took the throughput result from the first enclosure and from the second enclosure and I sum both values together and I get and I got uh, the 0 0.84 megabyte per second this is for 4k IO size so this is our uh, RAID architecture for uh, our uh, Raspberry Pi 3 uh, NAS server now we will go 
and uh, check and test our Raspberry Pi 3 performance with throughput and IOPS. And of course, the most important thing, the redundancy. So, please see my next videos. Thank you. So, we have all the parts here. Let's uh, meet them and connect them. So, we have the Myvan closure, we talked about them. We have here two Myvan closure. Each Myvan closure has two bays. We have inside the Fire CUDA disk HDD 1TB capacity and 5.4K RPM. Each enclosure have three modes, JBOD, RAID 1 and RAID 0. I'm going to uh, supply for both uh, enclosures uh, power by my Xiaomi uh, bank supply. So, let's start with the uh, Myvo enclosure. Let's give them, give them power supply. You will need to validate after you gave them power supply that the blue LED uh, will be at the configuration, the red configuration it shows. You will see what I mean. Just a moment. The LED, <coughs> the blue LED light is uh, going to validate your uh, red configuration you chose by the uh, jumper on the MyVio uh, enclosures, okay? So, on the right enclosure we can see <coughs> that the right one, the LED is on the right one and on the left Let's pour again. Okay, on the left, we see that it doesn't. Uh, validate our red configuration we chose which is red one you can see it by the blue uh, led light so what we're going to do is very simple we are going to reset the enclosure and wait for two seconds and voila both of the enclosures are on red one configuration we can see it through the blue led light next we are going to connect the USB uh, connector to the Raspberry Pi. But before, let's connect the external uh, 1 gigabit USB Ethernet port to the Raspberry Pi. We know that Raspberry Pi 3 came on board with 100 bit. 100 megabit per second, so that's why I bought this USB adapter. Now, let's connect the connect the USB into our Raspberry Pi 3 and we just need to power on with external power supply the Raspberry Pi 3 so let's go look
I already uh, burned inside the SD card of the Raspberry Pi the OMD system. You going to see when you finish to upload your Raspberry Pi with the OMV system, you are going to see an IP address. Our IP address, so we are ready to log in with our web browser to the NAS server and start configuring. So after we got our IP address, let's go to one of our web browser and put the IP address we got and then access the OMV. So the default username is admin and the password is open media vault. Okay, very simple. So the first step is to validate if our system recognize our enclosure. So let's go to the physical disk and we can see that the system is recognize them as SDA and SDB. Each enclosure have the capacity of one terabyte is almost one terabyte is because the RAID 1 configuration. So let's wipe it okay and do a quick wipe. Validate that there is not not something that uh, can uh, interfere or something like that. So after we wipe quick the disk let's go to the RAID management and apply the RAID 0 on both enclosure which we already configured them with RAID 1 so <coughs> give a name to your uh, RAID uh, device so I choose now choose the level of the RAID it's going to be a strip strip is recognized as rate zero this is what rate zero does stripping the data next we are going to choose our devices the enclosures in our case and then click on create so as we can see the system has finished and we got the state of the RAID is clean. So far so good. Um, in order to test our uh, NAS server we are going to we are going to need to have a file system and shell folder. So let's begin with the file system. Click on create. Select the device we just created right now. It's the RAID 0 on both of them. You can give it a label. I choose ext4. You can choose a different um, file system. And then click OK. So let's going to see at the procedure of the creation of the file system the performance of our uh, NAS server hmm. I just wrong with the IP address We can see the IOPS of our enclosure. The first enclosure is is almost stable on 103 and something in right IOPS, and also the second enclosure. But as we can see on the MD0, which is recognized as our uh, uh, RAID 0, okay, on both enclosure, we can, we can see that the right IOPS is very high, is 8,000 and 9,000, and it's almost stable on se between 7 to 9,000 IOPS for writing, so it's really amazing and high 
performance. So we can see for internal operations, those Fire CUDA uh, HDD disk are uh, promise the world uh, they will activate their SSD features, which is very high performance. To get 9,000 IOPS in almost stable uh, condition is great. So let's continue. So as we finish we are with our creation of the file system, next we're going to need to create the shelled folder and its permission. So let's go to the shelled folders and click add. Pick a name. Select the device we wish to use. It doesn't see. Ah, we forgot to mount the file system. So let's mount. Okay, the file system we create on the RAID zero configuration. Okay, right now we can see that our file system is mounted, and we can see all the capacity we can use it's almost two terabyte so let's go again to the shared folders click on add pick a name select device the same device we use on the right zero and permission let's go and pick everyone everyone read and write just for the test um, test it okay now in order to establish between the Windows and the Linux uh, connectivity we will need to enable the SMB okay and let's let's going to save it and then Let's share our folder. Okay. Public. Test allowed. Yes. Okay. Uh, let's see if we can see something. Let's see if we can create. We can as guest and save let's see if it's saved yes okay everything is good we are ready for our next test performance of our storage